What's up everyone, Scott from Triple Studios. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough and that little song that I created with the old valve state right here. And yes, that is my boom mic because my ceiling comes down like this and I can't do anything about it. You're just gonna have to get over it. Thank you uh, for your understanding. So in this little section here of the video, I just wanna talk about the valve state and give some tips and tricks on how, um, and at least in my opinion, uh, how you can use it. Uh, especially the contour knob and the treble in the middle. I couldn't get the other camera in here, so uh, looking from left to right, we have gain, bass, middle, treble, contour, volume, and then the master section over there, which I'm not going to touch. But you can see that the volume is at about, uh, so if you're looking at the 12 noon, the 2 or 3 o'clock position there. And the volume here I'm not going to touch as well. It's at the same position, about the 2 o'clock uh, position there. So it's interesting that this uh, that solid state amps, I should say, are sort of coming back. Uh, and I think it has a lot to do with this thing right here. Now, uh, in the early 90s, you know, even with the dual rectifiers, you know, new metal bands were not boosting their amps. So they had this real muddy, uh, dark, dark type of guitar tone that became known, you know, as, as the new metal tone. And with this, um, I really feel that once you get this dialed in correctly and you put the overdrive on there and you can see that my drive is at zero, my balance is down the middle and so is the tone knob. So I'm actually not doing anything that much to it. I'm just going to tighten the low end a smidgen. That's basically all that's going to happen. All right, so let's, let's look at this amper on the clean channel. Awesome, we did the clean channel. Next. Um, we have two different types of distortion. Now, this is where basically you just want to crank it. So here's the first type of distortion. Now, it has that characteristic martial tone where it has the bite in it. But the contour knob and the treble knob really make a difference uh, with the valve state here. So let's just put everything at let's just put everything at noon. Well, as, as best as I can see, maybe I can use the camera here. Uh, uh, oh, other way, yeah, okay. Oh my god, amazing! All right, so everything now is at noon with uh, overdrive one. <laughs> I'm hitting the strings uh, relatively hard there, um, but it's not that bad sounding. I really don't know what the issue is. Maybe it's the cabinet IR which I'm going through, which is the Captor X, and I'm going into a new IR pack that I'm testing, uh, and it's Glenn Fricker's fault because he was talking about these things called blackbacks. I was like, the hell is that? Well, I happened to find ML Sound Labs has a blackback IR pack. Blackback. IR pack, black pack, IR pack, black pack, IR pack, black pack, IR pack, black pack. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm using. And so I'm just using one of their pre-mixed versions. It's called the Dark. Put a screenshot up here. But that's what I'm using here. And I'm hearing a full body guitar tone with all the frequencies that I would expect to hear. But clearly not enough gain. So let's uh, go to OD ch channel two here and just making sure I don't have the max on enabled because I don't know what all the hate is about this amp, but this amp is sounded pretty pretty sexy. Um, let's dial it in a bit more. Oh, hold on. Okay, let's go ahead and dial it in. Now, I really recommend, me personally, that you start with the contour knob. Um, if you go to the to the left, you get a re you get really dark. Uh, if you go to the right, it gets really bright and scooped at the same time. So this is just going to be what taste you prefer. And then use the contour knob first to sort of get the amp already working in the direction that you want it to.
So I'm just moving it around until I don't really hear the cardboard box song anymore. <laughs> Okay, I like that. So all we did was move the contour knob, but now we need to start working with the treble because it still might be a bit bitey. So let's see what we do, uh, what we can do with the treble knob here. No, my guitar is not out of tune. It's just in D standard, and this guitar is just not holding it very well. Uh, the strings are too thin. So if I hit softly, everything's fine. Too hard, go out of tune. I'm liking how that sounds. So the top end is has the sizzle and the presence that I like, uh, but it's not grating on the ears. Uh, awesome. Let's move on to the mids, which we just turned to zero. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now the mid controls for this amp, at least in my opinion, is we're just going to refine what we've done with the contour knob. So we already have scooped the sound a bit with the contour knob. The mids, we're just taking that little extra tiny bit out of there. So now we're starting to sound sufficiently 90s. Look at this, still no definition. Bass, uh, this one, you can just turn all the way up. So this is, what is this, with with this guitar into this valve state, no boost, this is the tone that we get. I don't see what the problem is, but we could say that the low end is a bit tub tubish. And maybe we want to get a easy, easy little bit of more gain out of there. So let's just go ahead and turn this boy on. So as you can see, drive is at absolutely nothing. Um, uh, balance is on the middle, and then tone is actually also down the middle. And So I don't know what people were complaining about back in the 90s. It may have just been that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Let's show you how I mixed the song. All right, so in the middle of making this video today, it is now 12.35 on September 6th, which is 
my birthday. So I'm going to open this card from my grandma. Um, and have a drink. So happy birthday to me. And if your birthday is September 6th, happy birthday to you. So here's the card. It says, it's your birthday. And as Scotty the Squirrel would say, uh, you're not old as long as you remember where your nuts are. So pretty classic card from Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. I love you. Nice card. I enjoyed it. Uh, and there's a note here, too, which I won't read. A bit more personal. But, yeah. So let's look here at the session, which doesn't have a lot going on, actually. Um, I used the Extinction Level Event drums. I just thought they sounded awesome, and that's what I used. So here they are. Uh, there's a link for these down below in the description. It is an affiliate link, but they, they work perfectly for the song, and they sound fantastic. Uh, in particular, the ghost notes here. I also like that the rim shot is a proper rim shot. So there's a difference between snare center and rim shot, which actually allows me to strategically place these uh, in the song, for example, right here. Uh, because it would just more than likely happen that after a fill like that, you would just slam the stick down before going into the next bit. Uh, but these are the drums and I just did a low cut here at 45 for the kick and I just ran it through the 2500 with the drum bus glue preset. I did nothing else. Uh, the Eolika is legit. It's very easy to use. Uh, I really like it. Uh, bass is the, <laughs> you should be shocked, the STD Classic from Bogren. I just It's awesome. It works. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel if it works. The bass processing is exactly the same thing as basically what I showed you in the review video for the bass knob, which you can watch. Uh, it's in the cards up here somewhere. So EQ, double tap, and then uh, micro shift. So uh, we get something like this. So nothing, nothing new there. Now I've been kind of stalling on the guitar parts because you guys are going to be pretty, uh, pretty surprised. So I spent a long time trying to get a really cool cold type of uh, guitar sound uh, from the valve state, and then I experimented with a lot of different IRs. And as I and as I was talking about in the, you know, when I showed you guys the amp, I'm using this IR pack from ML Sound Labs, the Black Back. And I'm just using one IR. It's a mix. I have no idea what the mix is, but it just sounded great with the valve state. So I rolled with that. And then you will notice I have only EQ. And this is all I've done for EQ. This is it on the rhythm guitars. There's nothing else happening. The rhythm guitars, here we go. Um, I was actually pretty shocked myself. <laughs> <laughs> but man, it, it works. And just that small little EQ up here at 5K to help calm down the the ice picks in the ears. But man, I just have, this is all I've done for EQ. This is the only thing I've done for rhythm guitar EQ. That's it. And then I put L1 in here just to bounce it up, make it a bit louder. Um, leads are pretty much the same thing. Now, I used Black Hole because Black Hole is an amazing reverb plugin for black metal. It's just, oh, it's so good. But the EQ here, which is what I always do for lead style guitars, is I do take out more of the mid information, but I pretty much leave it alone other than that. I opted not to uh, make the highs too dull and soft because I need them to cut through the mix because I didn't change the amp settings actually for the lead guitar tone. 
um, which you should, if I'm being honest. There should be more mids introduced into here, but I didn't do it because uh, I really wanted an absolutely cold, kind of sterile uh, black metal sound, uh, which I think I did pretty well with with the valve state here. But I'm just taking out the low mid information a little bit because you don't need it in the in the lead guitars because you've got bass and rhythm guitars, so you can just you can tame that a little bit. And then Black Hole Man, just 25% mix, just helps create the atmosphere. And the thing I really like about the valve state with the leads is you can hear the pick attack. It's like this kind of squishy, squeaky type of sound that I really enjoy. You can really hear that. You can hear the pick just, you know, getting in there and doing the business. I really enjoyed it. And then uh, I actually did cleans. Uh, cleans were pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to use and they sound like this. So black hole here again, but I have it on 50% mix this time. This is just a preset. I just load black hole and whoop, I don't, I don't mess with it at all. This is literally, if you just load black hole, this is the setting that I used. I just put the mix at 50. Uh, the only thing I did here is I just compressed the bejesus out of it. It's about six to nine dB compression to help even out the, the, the performance a little bit. And then EQ, much of the same. It's cleans, don't need the low end here, doing the same thing with the low mids, just kind of taming them out a little bit. Because in the mix here, the cleans are playing in the background during everything uh, when the full mix is playing. I wanted to just be in the background, like you just barely hear it, okay? And then uh, on the submix, it's the same thing that I always do here. I have Neutron, Equalizer, Sculptor, um, with the mix knobs relatively low. Uh, the tape, UAD Struder, uh, Struder, I don't know how you would say it in German. And then uh, something I'm experimenting with now is using the Smart Limiter in conjunction with Ozone. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, the, it's a very simple mix. If I open up the console wheel here, uh, get rid of stuff we don't need to see, don't need to see that, don't need to see that, don't need to see that. Uh, put everything in the zones, cleans, leads, rhythms, bass, drums. So uh, I know you can't see it probably because of my camera. Let's scoot this over a little bit. So this is literally it right here. I have a couple of plugins on this entire mix. I uh, just spent a long time getting the guitar tone really actually. Uh, so it pays, you know, it pays to take some time looking at the IRs and finding the right IR for the, for the guitar tone. And if you don't know how to find the right IR, there is a link down below to my training course called Guitar Tone Mastery, which teaches you exactly how to create these kind of guitar tones, including processing and EQ and stuff like that. So this is uh this is it. There's no name for this. I don't know what this is going to be called. Maybe it'll turn into a song someday, but uh turned out pretty cool. All right. So that is the review of the Valve State. Now, um, should you get it? Uh, yes, I think you should. Just be just bear in mind the price. I think a fair price for the Valve State is going to be around three to four hundred dollars, uh, depending on uh, how good of uh, shape it's in. I would say that the one that I have is in pretty damn good shape. The guy I got it off from Reburp. I won't mention him here. I don't. He probably doesn't want me to put his name in here. But hello, uh, I'm I'm sharing the link with him, so he's watching this. But it, it's a really good condition. Uh, the price it was I think it was like around 300 euro. I don't remember actually, but it was around that price range, and totally worth it. Absolutely works flawlessly. Really really top mint condition. So. You know, go from there. If it's if it's in a pretty shit condition, like the Tolex is all ripped to pieces, and you know, like knobs have been replaced, I mean, then even 300 might be a bit too much. You might be looking at like 150 somewhere around there. Uh, but if it's in super ultra mega mint condition, you know, 400, I would feel comfortable paying that. But yeah, um, it's a it's an amazing amp with a boost. Uh, you're gonna be able to do modern sounding stuff quite easily, and I just it's just it's just an affordable amp that's if you can if you have the option to get one I think you should go ahead and pick it up so yeah that was the video about the valve state I really hope you guys enjoyed it and once again to anybody else who has a birthday the same day as me September 6th 
Happy birthday to you. Oh my God. Now I got to edit all this. Uh, well, time to get started. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.